Right, praise God. Yes. Welcome to um, another Bible study for Thursday night. And tonight we're going to talk about Did God Harden Pharaoh's Heart? Now, of course, many people will say yes. And we're going to look at the text because the text basically does say that as well. But as usual in these Bible studies, we're not going to just look at the surface evidence, but we're going to look at all the evidence and we're going to see that um, sometimes when we dig deeper and we get a better understanding, then God doesn't look so capricious and arbitrary. Glory to God. Amen. On the recording, um, you know, I go often go back and forth between the slide and my face, but it but this time, I think I'm just going to try to do both slide and face at the same time. So people only get a little, going to get a little glimpse of my handsome face while they get a bigger glimpse of the slide itself. As you are getting a bigger glimpse of the slide out here in the audience. But um, let's look at the text just to see exactly what the Bible itself says. So... In the text, which is um, Exodus chapter 4, verse 21, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I would have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Praise God. Amen. That's Exodus 4.21 in the King James Version. Um, many of you probably know the background. Um, just about, what was it, Joshua was about a month ago. We watched the Prince of Egypt here at the youth meeting. Um, um, you know, those of you who know me know that I get... I can get a little antsy when I'm watching a movie that I know is has is not in in sync at all with the Bible. Praise God, or you know it puts things in the movie that the Bible says nothing about. But the one of the good things about those type of movies, you know, when I grew up, I um, when I was younger, I watched the Ten Commandments with um, I forget the Charlton Heston. Excuse me. It, the Ten Commandments. I was so fascinated with that movie when I first watched it. And my mother said, oh, this, all these are, are real. It's in the Bible. I said, that's in the Bible? That movie's in the Bible? She said, yeah. So I started reading the Bible. I think I was about 10 years old. And I found immediately that the Bible and the movie just were quite different. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of times Hollywood movies don't always sync with the Bible. But the good thing about those is they at least do give you a general idea of what happened. And um, and the general idea is that Moses was once um, a prince. Of, he was a Hebrew and Egyptians were the Egyptian Pharaoh tried to kill all of the firstborn of, um, of the Hebrews because. Uh, or the Hebrew males, excuse me. And Moses survived. He was raised by the Pharaoh's daughter. And so that's where the idea of the prince of Egypt comes from. And so, but um, one of the things that the prince of Egypt movie didn't, didn't show you was the fact that when Moses was being raised by Pharaoh's daughter, that his own blood mother was his nursemaid. And so he already had an idea of who he was and what he was supposed to do long before um, he ran into the desert. But, you know, one day Moses sees that one of his Hebrew brothers suffering, being beaten by an Egyptian. So he looked here, he looked there, saw nobody was looking, and he killed the guy. And you think that the... Um, the Israelites would have appreciated what Moses did, but the next day Moses went over there and tried to stop a fight between two other Hebrews, telling them, hey, come on, guys, you're brothers. Why are you trying to hurt each other? And they said, well, what are you going to do, Moses? Kill us like you did the Egyptian? 
And so then Pharaoh found out about um, what Moses did. And he told, he said that he was going to kill Moses. So Moses took off. <laughs> and then he uh, married the woman in the desert. And he lived there for 40 years. And all he did was tend the sheep. Until one day he saw this burning bush. And he goes to the burning bush. And God says, Moses, I, I want to rescue my people. There's a long story in that. We won't get into it. And But Moses but the reason why I'm giving you some of the background is because you need to understand what those signs were, those signs and wonders that God was talking about. One of the signs that God told Moses was he would take his staff and throw it to the ground and it would become a serpent. The other sign was he put his hand in his um, bosom and pull it out and the hand would become leprous. And he put his hand back in and the hand would be completely healed. But the thing that really gets people is where it says that God was going to harden Pharaoh's heart and that Pharaoh would not let the people go. Now you wonder, did God really want Pharaoh to let the people go? Why would God harden Pharaoh's heart and then punish him for it? And when we read this, we the general idea that people read into it is notice that they read into it is that God did a supernatural act upon Pharaoh and overrode his free will and made Pharaoh harden his heart or made Pharaoh's heart stubborn. And that's why Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. So God was um, doing things to Pharaoh that, um, and then punishing him for it. Now, one of um, there are some important reasons why we have to look at certain things like this. Um, so, I just wanted to present you the importance of these lessons. And one of the the important things about these lessons is from a theological perspective. See. Passages like this that talk about Pharaoh's heart being hardened, atheists love to use these passages to prove that God, the God of the Bible, is really a mean, nasty, arbitrary, and vindictive person. And this is because they believe, like so many other Christians, that God supernaturally hardens people's hearts. Another group of people that um, I, I personally deal with on a consistent basis are those who are under what is called the Calvinist persuasion. Now, these folks take passages like this and they teach that um, God actually, um, everything that happens, no matter what you do, it was God's decree and divine will that it happened. Drunk driver goes and kills a little girl, God decreed it to happen. A pedophile goes and rapes a baby. God decreed that to happen. It's God's will behind all of that. And one of the passages that they like to use to prove these lies that they teach is the idea that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So there is no such thing as free will. And other, basically, they teach what a doctrine called total depravity. If you ever studied Calvinism, they have what is called a tulip. T-U-L-I-P and on the top of that um, teaching is the T is the total depravity. In other words, man has no freedom of will. Everything he does is done because God somehow, some way, energized him to do it. Yeah. So, was that, say, say that again? I just saw someone possessed by demons. Oh, yeah, that, well that, well, that was because God decreed that to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's Calvinism. I mean, even the devil is under God's control and has a short leash. And they don't understand spiritual warfare. So that's why it's a... But yeah. see, but they got, these, they got passages like Exodus 4.21 to make their point clear. So that's why you and I have to study these things so that we can... Um, disprove some of these things because 
they, they set out to confuse people with these type of teachings. But the other thing is practical. The other reason why these lessons are important is practical because, you know, we all can be tempted to go to be hardened. Praise God. If you read Hebrews chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4, the apostle who wrote that, who wrote the book of Hebrews, who I personally believe is Paul, he warns us not to harden your heart. You know, the Bible talks about how we can continue in sin and our conscience can be seared like a hot iron. So, um, Pharaoh, basically, his hardened heart destroyed the whole kingdom. When you read the whole narrative, especially when you get to 14 and you see that through the hardening of his heart, he tried to follow the um, Israelites into the Red Sea and every one of his men got drowned. And so Pharaoh's hardened heart destroyed the whole kingdom. You can destroy your whole life by letting your heart become hard. Praise God. Continue sin makes for a hardened heart. Have you, I don't know about you, but have, have you ever gotten to the place where you you continued in a habit to where you almost didn't care anymore? I've almost gotten there on, on, on an occasion or two until I realized what, what was happening to me. And I repent and I said, I got to stop this or else it'll become, I'll just become hardened. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. But if you, you, you know, you're not there yet. If you catch yourself and you say, hey, I, I need to repent right now. Praise God. But God um, is very concerned about these type of things. And so that's why we need to understand the process of hardening so that we don't fall into it. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. So these lessons are very practical. And so one of the best ways of, of understanding this, because the Bible, God doesn't have things put into the Bible for no good reason at all. He has things put into the Bible so that we can apply them to our own lives. So these studies that we have here are not just so that we can get more information into our heads. We need to study this so that we can learn to avoid how to fall into that same kind of hardening. Now, if God is the one who hardens us, then there's nothing we can do about that, right? Yeah. So there's nothing you can do. If God is God's the one who hardens you, ain't, there, ain't a thing you can do about it. Now, if there's something you can do about it, then we need to learn that. But see, if we look at Pharaoh and say, well, Pharaoh had no choice. God hardened him. God performed a supernatural act on him then we're going to, you know, we can become fatalistic and, and many people have. And they feel they're this way because God made them this way. I have heard homosexuals say that. Yeah, funny. Well, God made me this way. No. But see... They, but in reality, they could take a number of Bible verses if, if we don't learn how to study them properly. They got plenty of biblical support to support their lie. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So that's why that's why we need to understand these Bible verses so that we'll be able to when somebody comes up with that kind of stuff and say, well, you know, the reason why I'm the way I am is because God made me that way. Look, look, God did that to Pharaoh. See, so. We need to understand these things and let's um, we need to look at some there's some facts that we need to take note of, you know, because I don't want to go through all. And you don't have time for me to go through everything. Matter of fact, these um, lessons were in two parts. Praise God. I've condensed this one down to one and it still was hard for me to get all the information I wanted to get into. There's a lot of stuff I wanted to share, but I but I don't want to give you um, information overload but there are some facts that we need to take note of and some of those facts are at least 10 times you know I went through the Bible and counted them myself using um, my Bible software but at least 10 times God is said to have hardened Pharaoh's heart and I got the passages up here on the screen um, Exodus 4.21 we already looked at. You know, I don't want to go through and show you every last single one of those. 
but I can tell you at least 10 times God the or the Bible says that God hardened him and then at least four times Pharaoh is said to have hardened his own heart so that shows you right there that there was some freedom of will involved in there praise God so Pharaoh did his, he hardened his own heart four times and God is said to have hardened it ten times and then at least five times Pharaoh's heart was said to be hardened through no direct agency of anyone in other words it, there are certain passages that just said Pharaoh's heart was hardened it doesn't blame God for it and it doesn't blame Pharaoh for it it just says that um, Pharaoh's heart was hardened but what I want you to understand and what we're trying we're gonna try to prove here tonight for our own sakes and for the sake of those that we share the gospel with and for the sake of those that we minister to and those for the sake of those we counsel that hardening is a free will act praise God Amen. hardening is not something that is ir that God does to you that is irresistible and we're going to see that you know through the idiom that we often talk about in these Bible studies that God is often said to do that which which he only allowed or permitted or the Bible often says that God does certain things that he only allows or permits um, and I believe that most of our Bible translations the and starting with the King James the King James was it, I, I'm got a book that's coming out it was supposed to come out last in June but um I haven't really finished it and there's been somewhat of a people been asking about it but um but I got a book that's coming out pretty soon where I did some research and do you know the majority of the people that translated the King James Bible from the original languages Aramaic Hebrew and Greek the majority of them were staunch Calvinists the the lead interpreter was a Calvinist King James himself was a Calvinist praise God and so there is a reason why our Bibles read the way that they do now it doesn't mean that they were that the King James Version is inaccurate don't misunderstand me but there's a certain amount of prejudice that you have when you interpret the Bible if you got a choice of, of words and idioms that you can translate you can translate certain things either literal if they fit your um, theology or you can translate them in the way that in the spirit of what the translation is saying praise God there's certain you sometimes you got a choice of words that you can use and sometimes you may choose the words that better fit your theology than the ones that might actually seem to deviate from what you really believe praise God and so um, being that the King James Version was majority Calvinist and again it's not I'm not saying it's an inaccurate translation I think from my understanding the King James Version is accurate but it's more literal and there are some inaccuracies and some errors in it but um but it's more literal so saying that Pharaoh heart, God hardened Pharaoh's heart is not wrong but it is wrong in translating it that way praise God because um, we need to understand first of all from the spirit of the of the Bible that what Pharaoh did was completely a free will act now you know some of the scriptures that um, teach us that hardening is based on your choice in Mark chapter 8 verses 17 through 18 Jesus says to, to his disciples perceive ye not yet neither understand have ye hardened have your heart yet hardened having eyes see ye not in other words sounds like the Lord is a little frustrated here praise God because people can harden their own hearts in Zechariah chapter 7 verse 12 God tells his prophet he said yea they made their hearts as an adamant stone lest they should hear the law glory to God 
And then 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6, which is directly aimed at Pharaoh and the Egyptians. He, um, the question is asked by Israel's enemies, Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts, as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts? When he had wrought wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go, and they departed? So, from 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6, we see that Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Praise God. The other thing we need to see from this is that hardening your heart, in Pharaoh's case, hardening his heart was a sin. Praise God. And we're going to see why that's important in a moment. But harden, a hardened heart is a sinful heart, praise God. But Exodus chapter 9, verses 34 and 35, um, we read here, And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sent yet more and hardened his heart. He and his servants, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord has spoken by Moses. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And then one, a couple of verses above that, it reads, And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and he said unto them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. So even Pharaoh himself admits that he sinned. Praise God. So it's important to understand that hardening of a heart is sin. So if God hardened Pharaoh's heart, if he literally did it, then that would be make God the author of sin, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yes. Yes. If God is the one who hard, I mean, some people will say no because they're scared, but I'm going to tell you right now. The answer is yes. If God literally hardened Pharaoh's heart, and if, far, if hardening is a sin, then God is the author of sin. But here, here let's look at Hebrews chapter 3. We can also harden our hearts through the deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews 3.13 says, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So, hardening comes through sin, praise God. And like I said, if God literally hardened Pharaoh's heart, then God, that would make God the author of sin. But we know that God is not the author of sin. Praise God. And we'll look at a familiar passage of scripture that proves that. James chapter 1, verse 13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, Neither tempteth he any man. Praise God. So, when we read passages in the scripture that says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, we need to understand them in a different way. Either that or we have to accept that the Bible is full of contradictions. Now, remember our motto. We taught it last week. Or was it the week before? I don't remember. But it said that we said that there is no such thing in the Bible as contradictions. There are only explanations and clarifications. Praise God. Amen. The Bible explains its own language. So James chapter 1 says that God has nothing to do with the sin of the person. Yet we read in um, Exodus 4.21 and many other passages as I showed you that um, Pharaoh is... Um, that God seems to take responsibility for Pharaoh hardening his heart. So we need to go through some scripture interpretation. That's why you come here on Thursday nights because we get a, a lot deeper into scripture interpretation than we would on a regular um, church service. Praise God. So uh, we just wrote up here that if hardening is a free will act that we commit without coercion, 
and if hardening is a sin and a result of sin, then God is not the author of sin. Then how do we interpret those passages that say that God will harden or that God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm about to show you. First, we're going to get into some word studies. Praise God. And um, Robert Young, and his he had he had um, Kenneth Hagin. I remember I f was the first one to introduce me to this man's um, understanding of the Bible. And Kenneth Hagin, you know, when when I was struggling with some with back in the 80s, when I was struggling with some of the things about God depicted in the Old Testament, Kenneth Hagin referred us to Robert Young's um, Hints and Helps to Bible Interpretation and basically he told us that those Old Testament passages where God is said to do certain things was, told, was supposed to be understood in a permissive sense and when I first read that I got set free, praise God I could I, I understood you know things like Pharaoh hardening his heart God inflicting people with disease as um, permissive rather than causative and then I spent nearly 30 years trying to find that book <laughs> and never found it <laughs> praise God but I but my search has not been in vain the internet oh thank God for the internet the internet may have its issues but man the internet has been a blessing to Pastor Troy praise the Lord I've been able to find books and commentaries and stuff that I would, even if I found them in their physical form, I would not have had the money to buy all that. And if I did have the money to buy all that, I would have to buy a second house for most of that stuff. But, um, <laughs> but Robert Young, thankfully, one of the things I found online was his commentary on the Holy Bible. Uh, as literally and idiomatically translated out of the original languages. He, he he says concerning um, Pharaoh's hardening, he says, the causative or hifil. I've been teasing my wife the past couple of days about that thing called the hifil. The hifil is a um, what is called a con conjugative stem that if you look at the Hebrew words, I'm not a Hebrew expert, but I've been looking at the Hebrew in its original form in certain um, passages of the Bible, looking for that stem. But he says that that form of the Hebrew verb is often simply permissive or declarative, has been already repeatedly noticed and is universally admitted by biblical critics. And he gives a number of scriptures to search. But that's one, one of the things he's talking about is the hardness of Pharaoh's heart is if there's a hitfill stem, conjugative stem on the, in, within the original Hebrew, then that means that it was permissive and not causative, praise God. Mm -hmm. In other words, God did not literally cause the hardening of Pharaoh's heart, but he simply permitted it, praise God. And another one, William Nicholson, he writes, It is moreover well known that the Hebrew verbs in the Hifil conjugation signify to permit or to suffer to be done as well as to cause to be done. Hence, nothing more is meant than to leave a man to the bent and tendency of his own disposition. Thus, Pharaoh was left, and he is said to have made his own heart stubborn against God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So, when you read that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, you and you look at the Hebrew, if you're a Hebrew expert, I'm not, don't claim to be, I'm just, but I, but I, I was looking at it because I wanted to be sure. That even these men were right, praise God. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> yeah. so you can't trust just anybody, no matter how much of an expert they claim to be. But uh, you know, but when you see the stem, it means that this was supposed to be permissive and not causative. So translators really should have should not have written it in that way, where it says that Pharaoh that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. It should have said that God allowed or let. Or permitted his heart to be hardened. Praise God. And we, thankfully, there's some translations of the Bible that do say that. But that's what God does to all of us when we decide that we're going to go against God. God will let it happen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. He won't. He's not going to stop us. He gives us the freedom to choose. Um, 
another one. The Holy Bible, according to the established version with notes, says, Everywhere in Scripture, God is said to do what he permits, and especially if the thing done be uncommon. Verbs in a hip-filled voice denote to suffer, to permit to be done, as well as to cause to be done. So since Pharaoh, um, God's hearting Pharaoh was written with a hip-filled stem, then we need to understand that that was permissive and not causative. Praise God. Now let's quickly go through some translations. Um, you know, I want to give us time to, to, to have a discussion and ask some questions. But I don't want to have a part two of this. Because I do have a, another whole bunch of slides that talk about some other areas of this. But I don't want to get into that because I, I don't want to bore y'all half to death. Praise God. But are, but are you learning anything from this so far? Praise Jesus. All right. Let's look at some alternative versions. The Emphasized Bible by J.B. Rotherham. On this translation of Exodus 4.21 it says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, When thou goest to return to Egypt, see us touching all the wonders which I have put in thine hand, and thou do them before Pharaoh, but I will let his heart wax bold, and he will not suffer the people to let go. In other words, God is... Pharaoh has already made up his mind. God's not going to try to stop him. He's going to withdraw his grace from Moses. I mean, from Moses, from um, Pharaoh. But when you really understand God, God would have preferred for Pharaoh to cooperate with him immediately. Praise the Lord. But um, since Pharaoh, he know, but he knew how Pharaoh was going to react to Moses telling him to let the people go. I mean, you think about it. You got free labor. You got you got slaves that's building all your pyramids and all your castles and all and all the stuff. You ain't gonna let them go that easily. Praise God. <laughs> and God know God knows the heart of man. You what do you think Moses is gonna come in there and do a few signs and then say and then Pharaoh says, Oh, oh my goodness, let those people go. <laughs> no, Pharaoh said, uh uh. Not only that, Pharaoh got upset and said, You know what? I'm gonna make y'all work twice as hard. And I ain't giving you no straw for your bricks. So, but so God, God's not behind that kind of thing, but he knew what was going to happen. And so that's why he was basically forewarning um, Moses. I mean, if, if you read, for example, in Matthew chapter, I think it's chapter 10. And Jesus makes this statement. He says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I came to turn brother against um or you know daughter against mother and, and son against father. do you think jesus came to literally do that no what jesus was saying there he was saying that this is going to be the result of my coming here this is going to be it's not that god wants family unity that's his will but he knows how people are going to react to his to the message of the gospel praise god and it certainly has turned families against each other you, it's turned Muslims again to kill their own children because they've embraced Jesus Christ. It, it's it's caused families to the um to go against each other because one person is saved and the other one's not. Well, that's the same thing that God was saying here with, when it concerned Moses. He wasn't saying I want Pharaoh to, to harden his heart. He's saying Moses, this is what's going to happen, and I'm going to allow it to happen. I'm not going to prevent it. Praise God. And we got a, you know, I found a number of, of Bible translations. I'm only going to give you all three of them, praise God. So, like I said, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information. But um, this one is called the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testaments, now translated from corrected text of the original tongues by B. Boothroyd in 1836. Back in those days, they had long titles to their books. Believe me, I know. I went through a lot of those books. So <laughs> they have a tendency to have long titles in their books. But the fact, but the other thing is they had a lot more time to study than most of our scholars today. And so they took time out to find some of the information. And that's why I prefer the old books to the new ones. But this translation of Exodus 421 says, Moreover, Jehovah said to Moses, When thou shalt have returned into Egypt, see that thou do all those 
thing, those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have given thee power to do. Yet I will permit his heart to be so hardened that he will no, not let the people go. Praise God. So God permits or lets his heart to become hardened. And let's just look at one more um, translation. This was a translation of the Old Testament scriptures from the original Hebrew by Helen Sparrell. Hey, women power. Mary. <laughs> Takako. But anyway, <laughs> woman translating the scriptures. But anyway, she writes, or her translation says, And Jehovah said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou put forth in Pharaoh's presence all those wonders which I have placed in thy power. Nevertheless, I will allow his heart to be hardened so that he will not let the people leave. Praise God. So that's, to me, the better way to translate it. Now, very quickly, we're going to go through these Bible commentaries very quickly. Um, matter of fact, we'll, yeah, just very quickly. Adam Clark, um, one of my favorites, he, um, his 1831 commentary says, All those who have read the scriptures with care and attention know well that God is frequently represented in them as doing what he only permits to be done. So because a man has grieved his spirit and resisted his grace, he withdraws that spirit and grace from him, and thus he becomes bold and presumptuous in sin. Pharaoh made his own heart stubborn against God, and God gave him up to judicial blindness so that he rushed on stubbornly to his own destruction. Praise God. Amen. So, and one of the reasons why I like Adam Clark is because he was very skilled in the Hebrew and the Greek. He knew the original Bible languages, so he knew what he was talking about. Praise the Lord. Matthew Henry is another popular and very well-known commentary. So I intentionally chose well-known commentaries. I have a lot of commentaries I've quote uh, I've um, written down in the paper concerning Pharaoh's hardened heart, and I've only chosen three out of the many. It says, Pharaoh continued obstinate. He hardened his own heart, and now God just justly gave him up to his own heart's lust, permitting Satan to blind and harden him. If men shut their eyes against the light, it is just with God to close their eyes. This is the sorest judgment. A man can be under out of hell. Woo. In other words, if God leads you to your own mess, you are in trouble indeed. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I think Pat, you weren't here um, Sunday, Pastor Steve, but Pastor Mary read a scripture that fits exactly along with this. Um, from, I think it was from Revelation where we where she um, expounded on it. And it, that was a good message, Pastor Mary. We kind of have to preach that on a regular Sunday one day. I mean, it, but basically, he who... Yeah, it was Revelation 2.15. Why don't you open that up real quick? Because I, I think that fits very much with the Bible study. Let's look at um, this one last commentary very quickly while Pastor Mary finds that. It says... And um, David Ritchie, in his lectures, explanatory and practical on the doctrinal part of the Epistle of Paul to the Romans. He says, it is not unusual with the inspired writers to omit all the intermediate and secondary causes on which an effect depends. And to refer only to God as the ultimate cause of all things. And hence, in the scripture idiom, God is often said to do what he only permits or does not pose to prevent the means by which Pharaoh's heart was hardened were God's withdrawing the plagues one after another when Moses at the king's entreaty interceded for the nation praise God amen so all these commentaries by men by scholars who got more letters behind their name than I've ever seen in my whole life uh, <laughs> help us to understand that within the original um, language and the culture and idioms of the people, we can understand that God did not literally harden Pharaoh's heart, but he's but he is said to do it only because he did not stop it. Praise God. And 
But when we have made a choice to harden ourselves against God, God will allow us to have our own way. And when, and when God leaves us, we's in trouble. Praise God. Now, what's, just read that scripture, Pastor Mary. Read it loud. Chapter 22, verse 11. Chapter 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. Still. Mm -hmm. still. Which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his who his work shall be. To give every man to every man according to his own work shall be. See, that's see your character. People wonder why. Why is it that not everybody's going to heaven? <laughs> character. It's character. Yes. <laughs> you God can't. You if a thief can't go into heaven, as I always say, he's gonna steal the streets of gold. <laughs> We're walking down the streets and find out what what happened. There's so many Jews here. Yeah, the, the pearly gates are gone. What's up? God can't have nobody lusting in heaven. You know what I mean? I mean, you can't. Yeah, it's all, yeah, all the gold gone. There can't be no sin in heaven. And see, character determines everything. That's why on earth. We develop our character. That's why the Bible talks about walking in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then it talks about the fruit of the spirit. You know, love, joy, peace. These, this is character development. Praise God. And see, God, that scripture, Revelation 22, man, that's a scary scripture for those of us who don't want to change. Hallelujah. You cannot go to heaven with the, with the same character that you had starting out. Praise God. Yeah. This, our, our time on earth is for character development. As well as winning the loss to Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't have love? How do you think you're going to make it to heaven? Praise God. <laughs> you want to sit around and, and, and sin and beat people up and then think, oh, well, I said the sinner's prayer three years ago. No, you're going to hell. <laughs> I mean, it, it ain't even fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can laugh about it, but it... it in the long run, it really ain't funny. Oh, he's stealing the gold. He's going up there and stealing the gold from him. God can't have thieves in heaven. Praise God. <laughs> so, so there's a character development, and that's why if we choose to be filthy, the Bible says, "Let him be filthy still." You know, um, one of the, it is it, it's just when you die. Character is already intact. So if you die saved and living for Jesus and you love in the Lord, that's the character you have when you get to heaven. Praise God. Amen. Now, you know, that's, don't misunderstand me. We know that some people, you know, they get saved and then they die a couple of days later. We know they made it in. You know, there's, you know, God's going to take care of that. Um, from what I understand, from what people tell me, there's schools in, in heaven for people like that. But, yeah, I heard about it. That's what they say. There's schools in heaven to, to teach people to overcome worldly things and, and understand what heaven's about. But uh, but we're talking about people that are supposed to be living for the Lord, supposed to be um, been Christians for 10, 15 years, and you still act in the same way you acted when you 15 years ago? No, there's something wrong here. Praise God. And if you keep sinning, you're going to be hardened in that sin. Deceitfulness of sin hardens people. See, first we start making excuses for our sin. That's the one thing I've learned to stop doing. Stop making excuses. Praise God. Just, Lord, forgive me. Help me to overcome this thing. Praise the Lord. I do not I do not want to make the mistake of getting hardened. Yeah, yeah you, the Bible talks about it in, in that place where Pastor Mary read and and. and she, the way she expounded on the Sunday boy, that scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna make sure I get myself right. I don't want. <laughs> and that's what that's what the world.
word of God should do for us, no matter who, whether it's me preaching or anybody preaching it, the word of God should convict. It should help us to reevaluate ourselves. That's why James called it a mirror. You look in it and you change. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I've done enough talking. Any Anybody want to say anything? Any questions or additions or disagreements? All your disagreements, if you're right, I'm going to delete them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot bring anybody. We cannot make excuse for nothing. Mm. That's when, that's between God and us. Nobody can do the two things. I know. We can easily bring on somebody how I act. Or don't want to take a responsibility to admit or you're wrong. Right. You can't. That's a doubt, I think, wrong. Heaven, everything open. And nobody can make excuses. You're right. There's just no excuses. We God, God provides every means. That, that, that's scripture, exactly. No excuse. Yeah. That's it. I know you did it. You choose that. Mm. So God talking to us, we ignore it. I know He He loving God. He talked to us, but a lot of people ignore it, and you don't want to hear because in the same or compromise. God, speak, the Holy Spirit, you know, dwell in us. Nobody have excuse. God knows everything yeah. we have. But we say something heart is different, you know. Like I, we always pray for hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. Even the we we are spiritually, you know, evil leaders, you know. Hypocrite. <laughs> right. No, you're right. The heart in what we say different the liar. <laughs> you're right. And one of the points you brought up, Sister Takako, was where you said that um God is speaking to us and yet we still can harden our hearts. And you know that Hebrews actually talks about that. It says when you hear when God when you hear your, the voice of God, harden not your heart. It speaks to it says directly to that. In other words, God is so loving, he will actually talk to you. And but see what happens to many of us, and that's why the apostle had to warn us, if when God is speaking, you don't harden your heart. Listen, praise God. We, we got to learn to listen. But yeah, good point, sister. Thank you. Then we look at what um, talking about the heart and heart. As you were pointing out, the fear has these people do his work. Me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Free labor. <laughs> Let it go. And we don't, if we don't, just allow her to be happy. Mm. 
You may not see it. Maybe that's something God will point on you. I say, I, I, I see the letters more. Mm-hmm. I see the letters more. You see? If, if God just mm-hmm. show us some more money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's worth the money. Some of us got something ability. We do it for our own pride. Yes, yes. Same thing that we have. But we're not doing it. Let it go. For the service of God. But we draw the attention to ourselves. It makes us feel good. Mm. See, when we have to see, it makes us feel good. When we feel around us, it makes us it makes us feel good. There are some people who have wives or husbands that for a reason they get a certain comfort from there. They don't want to be least depressing. Mm. To do what they have to do. You owe so much controlling. Mm. That's called control freak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now those are those are very very good practical points. I mean, it's and it's funny that you talked about the money part because I'm on the bus on the way over here and I'm reading. I was just telling y'all during the prayer time about um, Lauren Cunningham who founded YWAM and he was talking about how his father had taken a trip to Israel. And um, and he saw this little girl begging, and after that, that just gave him a stronger heart for missions. And so they're about to buy this jeep for a missionary. And Lauren Cunningham, he's only a teenager, like 17, 18 years old, and his father's preaching about giving up, you know, making a sacrifice for the missions. And Lauren Cunningham had been saving up all this money to buy him a car. You know, when you're a teenager, you want that car bad. But God spoke to Lauren Cunningham and told him. To give that money for that missionary's car, and he did. Then God blessed him with a, with a car, <laughs> and now he's got a worldwide ministry. Praise God! Yeah. So you know, but I've, I've, I'm very sure that there are others out there who God told them give that money up, and they hardened their hearts, and that's why they're broken poor even to this day. Yeah. Praise God. God. God tells us to do things not just for his own sake, but for ours. He wants us to do things so that he can be have the, ch- the door open to bless us. Praise God. Yeah, but that's all right. No, it's that you can edit it. Yeah. You can edit it when you don't want to take it off. Pharaoh God, right? Yeah. Other God. Yeah, just like now, this for somebody Christian approach to Muslim person, they believe Allah. Mm. They believe, if we do our God does miracle, whatever we do, the God do show somebody Muslim people. They still believe Allah is bigger, uh, greater. So that's a fellow. He's it's I think he's a position hard to you know. But he doesn't respect this God. Right. So therefore, I understand why he hardened his heart because he believed even his son that he still you know pray to that mm-hmm. his yep. idol. Yep. So he doesn't respect our God, so he doesn't listen. But he came and chasing Israel. Yeah. He, you know, they almost tried, no? Red Sea. He came to chase. But he doesn't respect God at all. Mm-hmm. But he also he had a chance to repent too. He's a human being, right? Mm-hmm. He might have had a chance. So I think he free will, but I understand he believed that God, different God. Mm. So that's why he, he didn't care. First he tired of it. Did he change his mind? He chasing, you know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that story is if I am in that Bible time, I understand what he act. He doesn't need to spare our God at all. Well, you know? One thing you one thing you've made clear, Sister Taco, is that a hardened heart makes a person stupid. So show up. Because he cannot see. You know what? I don't they can see. I don't Yeah, I know, but after all those after all those signs, you know, all the plagues and stuff, and then if I see God open up a whole Red Sea, 
may, maybe I don't. Not that I'm saying I'm all that smart or anything, but I think I'd be smart enough not to go through that. Yeah, let them go. You know. Yeah, it's like I, I think I'll let them go. <laughs> I mean, I might be stupid up to a certain point, but once you, I see a Red Sea open, I think I'm I'm not going to be chasing after them. He was a powerful man. He, he yeah. had pride also to me. He's very had pride. Yeah. Pride. But, pride is same also. Yes, pride. Well, pride usually comes through a hardened heart. Yep. Yeah. I think it said the next to our time today. But mm-hmm. all Jesus have said, and you see, when if the horror come, we try try to go get closer to God. Mm. You know. As soon as time elapses, we just relax and forget. You know that? Mm. Let's say like 9-11. Oh, that's a, that's a good that's a good one. Go ahead. 9-11, hmm, people, I know people who didn't know God. We have people who worship him. Where we going on? Mm-hmm. People being receptive for even listening to the gospel. Go who didn't, uh, who couldn't. But after a time has passed, people are realizing. Yep, yep. You see? Mm-hmm. So when it happened, the hour happened to Pharaoh, when he see the things happen, then he turned. And as he quiet, and said, no, 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 I'm mistaken. Okay. How many people, <laughs> some people maybe they yeah. made a resolution, mm-hmm. oh, the way they see the thing will be in church. How, as soon as they see quiet, now, it went right back. Yep, went right back. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a good <laughs> point. Yeah, you saw the churches crowded after 9-11, man. It, everybody was a Christian then. And <laughs> yeah, after thing, everything calmed down, everybody just went back to business as usual. Yeah. My horror happened here is that they won't just be back. Oh yeah. After they're also afraid of the unknown, so who else to turn to but God? <laughs> yeah. Right, at the right. Same point though. They were gonna say people get so lax because like, oh, okay, nothing else is happening. Yeah. yeah. Back to normal. Why spend my extra time? There's no problem here anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's I yeah, mean, that, I mean that, the that, country, yeah. people in general, people mm-hmm. throughout the world, just have such a loose definition of sin now. Yeah. That's part of the deterioration of all of our culture. Mm, excellent point. There we yeah. go. Everything is all set, don't judge me. Everybody's right, don't <laughs> yeah. hurt my feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, especially a PC culture. You have to watch out for it because nobody's really wrong. You have to embrace everything. He has strict rules, right? Yeah. Now. He says, hey, here's what is and what's not acceptable. Right. So when people fall into those norms, all of a sudden that loss of sin. Nobody completely wrong, so yes. to say. Nobody. There's nothing to fear until, unfortunately, like you said, something like a 9-11 happens. All of a sudden, that reality strikes. You don't know the future, so you have to rely to God. So mm. Yeah, no, dude. Great points, everybody. I'm, yeah, this is a, always interesting. See, that's why it's good to have you back, Josh. You can <laughs> bring that perspective here. But that... Yeah, it's just it's a shame how we human beings are, <laughs> and it's just it's it's a human nature that you have to discipline, and you have to put down, because any of us can be like that. Mm-hmm. Any of us, we're all subject to that temptation where when things are are going wrong, then we run to God. When things are well, we turn away. I mean, and I think any if anybody can identify with that, it's those of you who come from Liberia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you know when y'all was going through some stuff, everybody was saved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were praying. What <laughs> churches were packed. <laughs> they, they came to America. They were probably still saved on the plane. I think that rabies dog that Pastor Steve talked about was <laughs> sitting right outside Kennedy Airport. <laughs> they bit him. Japan, people got trouble. They they go to, of course, Buddhists, a lot of people. Yeah. So they go to temple. Pray. Somebody sick, they go to temple. But after that, thank you, God. Then they don't care. Mm. It's only something from God. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a shame, but
And that this is why the studies like this are important because if we don't learn to deal with that, it we can it, it's too easy to fall into. It's amazing when you talk to some people, man, um, and share the gospel with them how they react. <laughs> it, it's it's like wow, how did you become so hardened? But I've come to realize it could easily happen to me if I'm not careful. Praise God. Amen. Amen.